Good afternoon, Dr. Anandakandan, Dr. Tiwari, Madam, dear friends. Greetings to all of you. I chose this particular subject for future of ophthalmology. I know that we are making excellent progress and the future is going to be bright. There are certain areas which I would like to touch upon just to remind the youngsters, to remind them that they have a great responsibility to shoulder if we have to have a good future. <coughs> it's important to remember that responsibility is something which you should not forget and that each and every one of us in the society, Society of Ophthalmology, have a responsibility to make the future of ophthalmology in India a very bright one. By future improving for ophthalmology, the country is going to improve and we are going to improve ourselves individually. This is a very important thing which I want you to kindly remember. Next slide. I have no financial interest. Next one, please. Now, I'm going to play a song for you. This is by, not yet, this is by Mahakavi Subramanya Bharati. He lived in the early part of the 20th century and he fought for our freedom. He was a great visionary. He was a person who had an adventurous nature. He dreamed or he dreams and I would like you to hear what he said in the early part of 20th century. I believe we can have it at the end, so we'll have it at the end. Next one, please. <clears throat> you heard me this morning covering four subjects that we do have a major burden on our heads. How are we going to reduce the burden? You also heard about teaching and training and how it should be and about research, exchange and views with you. And I strongly urge you all to assimilate the new advances which are taking place not only in ophthalmology but more particularly in other branches of medicine and other branches of engineering, communications, etc. Now, I, I don't think my good friend Dr. Ravi Thomas is here, but uh, he wrote a beautiful article in the Indian Journal of Ophthalmology in 2008. He did that after inspecting a large number of postgraduate institutions and this is what he had to say and this has received good coverage in the Indian Journal of Ophthalmology but I'm going to read every one of them for you so that you carry home a message particularly those who are in charge of the departments of teaching and training heads of the Department of Ophthalmology Regional Institute of Ophthalmology please know that after a very thorough thorough study he claims that none of the programs met the criteria for training or care Routine comprehensive examination was neither taught nor practiced. Individually supervised surgical training being, using beam splitter was not practiced in any program. Neither was modern management of complications or its teaching. Faker investigation was not taught at all. In our postgraduate institutions, if faker investigation is not taught, what are they going to do after they graduate and come out and practice outside? Instruments provided specifically for training were not used for the purpose. Students reported that theoretical teaching was good enough. What a complacency. What a complacency. The students themselves, I believe, said, it's enough if we know theory. Sad, sad state of affairs. And, uh, of course, Ravi became a little unpopular after this particular article was published. But nonetheless, he has spoken the truth. Now, <laughs> we have training programs for ophthalmologists and at the end of it they take an exam and I would like to have for the country, for the future of the country, for the future of ophthalmology in the country, a single system of examination. DNB examination is an exam which is held all over the country for the ophthalmic graduates. It is not that each university conducts an exam. That is not a good one because you cannot maintain standards of quality. DNB has a uniform standard which is exercised throughout the country. The second is, I did touch upon e-learning. 
I did mention to you that we do have an Ekaliva portal, but more than that, we have now, in the next slide we're going to show you, next one please, yeah, the learning management system, which we have introduced, it's a software which takes care of from admissions to personal interaction between the teacher and the student, between grading and exceptionally good system of education because we have several problems. Number one, paucity of good, dog, good teachers. Number two, distance. This country is a huge big country. To make available education, e-system, e-learning is a very good method of teaching and training. I'd like to tell you that we have video conferencing facility with uh, other institutions. Like for example, we're connected with uh, Bhagwan Satya Sai Baba's Super Charity Hospital. The postgraduate students from the, from the ophthalmology department have attended our grand rounds or are attending our grand rounds and have interactions when visitors come. They can ask questions and we can answer from Chennai. So Puttaparthi and Chennai are at least separated by 400, 450 kilometers. In the ekaleva.com, we have a video on demand. If you remember, you can ask, what shall we do with this exotropia? You have a video, we have a, a grand round record, which you can play and see. And we do, we work through the web portal, video streaming, so that when Dr. Neil Miller visited us, we were able to show his speech all over the country, particularly those who are in, uh, registered with us, we had sent the messages earlier and we were able to have a good attention. Next one, please. What I want to talk with you a little bit about this morning is the management uh, from a visual standpoint, visual rehabilitation, if you will, of patients with homonymous uh, hemianopias. Mm -hmm. And um, it seemed to me that the goals for patients with a homonymous defect are of two major types. What we want to do is either to improve the patient. Uh, for the paramedics, it's very important that we do have the Shankarinthali Academy or the LICO, the Arvind model, which are good for teaching and training of all paramedical personnel. Unless everyone who is working with you has the same quality approach, how can you expect quality in the overall end result? So it's very important that you do train your assistants in a recognizable institution so that the training is professional and they approach the problem in a professional manner. Next one, please. Now, I touched upon the subject earlier. I'll go through it again. Next one, please. <clears throat> now, I mentioned to you about hospital information management system. This is a very good tool whereby you are able to fix the appointments, surgery schedule, registration, etc. Particularly if you have a large group practice, about 82 doctors are working together at Shankar Nathalia. To fix appointments, to fix surgery schedules, a hospital information system is required. Even if you have a smaller practice, these are required so that you approach the problem in a very professional manner. You are able to give a printout to the patient indicating to him when exactly is appointment, etc., etc., without any confusion. Uh, electronic medical records I touched upon. Electronic medical records are there in, in Calcutta, our branch in Calcutta, our branch in Tirupati. Now in case a patient from Calcutta comes to Chennai, all that I have to mention is the MRD number and the file will come through the electronic media in practically no time. So patients' mobility is possible. You are able to exchange large volumes of material, particularly through the electronic media. Now this is our medical records department earlier. We had large number of records, nearly about 2 million records and it occupied 6,000 6, square feet area. Now we have converted since 2007 into <coughs> e-files e e and all that you need is 250 square feet for 0.2 million case records and file transfer is immediate and it requires less manpower. <coughs> I want you to know something about teleconsultation. If a patient in Calcutta says that uh, he is not very happy with uh, 
modality of treatment which has been given to him you have a chance that you could you could uh, consult a senior in other institutions get an answer for him so this is still a consultation a second opinion not necessarily from the same institution but even from any institution which you are associated with so it has many advantages so let's keep let's try to convert assets into electronic medical records which will in the course of time allow you to function with evidence based medicine as the main thesis main point and also allow you to do research the requirements are stringently met by electronic record system the electronic medical record system does not take any any more time than the physically written handwritten case record it takes just about the same time next one please i mentioned to you about uh, the national knowledge network i'm very happy that netrale has uh, been given a hub and we're able to connect with other institutions we will be able to do teaching and training through the national network we will be able to exchange a lot of research data through the national network and we will be able to have more importantly the medical records available for every practicing of somebody in india in their offices just if they simply own a laptop and internet connectivity we have a laptop and internet connectivity very simple to connect to national knowledge network and have your medical records stored in a server away from your office and it's going to cost you practically very little so i did talk about the surgical training the virtual reality surgery is available not only for cataract surgery but also for vitreoretinal surgery as well and you are seeing now a fake being done and on the other side the virtual reality surgery being performed by the trainee so which is where you learn and practice the fake classification as shown on the right side now tell you of somebody our country is a large country country of distances if the patients don't come from villages and from tribal areas there is no surprise should be there and it also is expensive so they can't come you take all modern equipment to tribal area examine the eyes send the messages through the satellite communication to the main hospital and importantly you don't need to have an ophthalmologist in the van it is enough if you have an optometrist who examines you and feeds you information through telecommunication next one please if you prescribe glasses in the village where will you go to get it filled we have a mobile glass dispensing van which has been functioning in several places as shown in the drawing which makes the glasses available to the villager within about 30 minutes to 45 minutes so we of course charge a very nominal fee because anything given free is not appreciated so they have to buy the glasses but it can be done right then and there on the same day the prescription is given and this is in villages next one please we have introduced telepathology tele ophthalmic pathology and uh, dr bishwas who is heading the department of uh, pathology in our institution is able to provide on tele ophthalmic telepathology connectivity the opinion about a particular case and time is saved and also he able to teach and train the other person on the other side next one please we can do research with tele ophthalmology and tele connectivity here is dr tarun sharma examine a patient in diabetic retinopathy screening model we want to know whether ophthalmology led model is better or ophthalmology uh, ophthalmologist based model is better so dr sharma made the examination as ophthalmology based method and the other one is take a photograph send the photograph to the main hospital and see so this is cost effective ophthalmologist led model is a preferable model this is what we are suggesting to the people who want to have diabetic retinopathy screening developed in the institution and this is a less expensive model so this is better the mobile surgical van you heard about it in the morning we can perform surgery at the doorsteps of the villages and the tribal areas tribal people 
without they having to travel. Uh, every one of them require undergo a faker mesification surgery so they can be ambulant patients. They can be discharged back to their own homes. They are given post-operative care the next day by one person going to the village or tribal area and examining them. So this way we can cut a lot of costs and also make it comfortable for the tribal people and this is mobile surgical van. Next one please. Most uh, importantly, I told you that we need to be in research and uh, <coughs> research consists of lots of things. Massive epidemiological studies are required. You have done it in diabetic retinopathy and glaucoma. Next one please. I need just another two minutes sir. I talked about this. Next one please. Next one please. Next one please. Some of these have been patented and uh, I'm extremely happy that uh, the DNA macrochip for ocular infections, the first in the world, was patented and is commercially available. What is this macrochip? If you have a case of endophthalmitis, if you want to know whether the patient is suffering from bacterial infection, fungal infection, or viral infection, because the treatment is going to be different. So you can have results in about eight hours by using the macrochip with the facilities which are available in your own hospital. You don't have to have required any sophisticated microscopes, etc., etc. And this is going to be, once again, helping you come to a diagnosis, rapid diagnostics as we call it, as early as possible. Indian Eye Research Group is not a part of a AAOS, but uh, this has been founded about maybe 10-15 years ago. Dr. Gulapali Rao and Dr. Nambiramal Swami and myself started this in Hyderabad. And we meet every year and young ophthalmologists who are researchers also and basic scientists are encouraged to come for this meeting. Now, the meeting is of such caliber, such standard, that Arvo has requested the IERG to team up with it to hold the next meeting, which I'm glad to inform you will be held in, in New Delhi. Within India, we must co cooperate with each other. This is what uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam said. So we did make a understanding, make an understanding between Elvi Prasad and Arvindai Hospital, and we would be doing collaborative research. We are doing at the present time to uh, an extent, but this has got to grow. It just cannot be within the three institutions. It's got to be within the country. There are 145 institutions which are teaching institutions. There can be tremendous amount of collaboration between various institutions within India. Ah, this is a big dream of mine. This is a national eye institute like what you have in Bethesda, Maryland. Why not we have one for India? Dr. Anand Kannan, Dr. Tiwari, I think you people can take it up and make sure that this becomes, my, this dream of mine becomes a reality. National Eye Institute admits very rare patients, very rare cases and gives them a complete comprehensive uh, checkup including in laboratory investigations. What happens is, is that you are able to understand what is happening to a given patient. He has got a very rare disease, you can't come to diagnosis. So the National Eye Institute provides opportunities like that and it has got a battery of basic scientists who help in arriving at a diagnosis. We need one for India. So all the complicated cases where we can't come to a diagnosis can be referred to a National Eye Institute wherever it is located and we come to a definitive diagnosis and help the patient finally. Next one, please. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Next one, please. Swami Vivekananda, arise, awake, and stop not till the goal is reached. We have a long way to go. You have the song now? No. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>